Hello everyone and welcome to another video and welcome to another podcast this time on the Portuguese GP which has just ended like what an hour back and we are here because yes we got an another episode for you so let's start the discussion straight away let's start it so Mercedes 92 wins for Hamilton they thought it couldn't be done and That's I was watching the Sky News broadcast of it and not Sky News, sorry, the Sky Broadcast version yeah. of it. And it's what one of the commentators said, we never thought we'd see this in our lifetime. Exactly. We thought we'd see this in a few years time. Amazing job in Hamilton. I'm not his biggest fan, but an incredible effort he's done. 92 wins is no easy And part. he's not done yet. So it's, it's still commendable to what extent he'll be extending his lead. I don't know if ever any driver is going to be able to match it because he's in a league of his own. Let's be clear about that because I, 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 there is Bottas but then do you see what happened to Bottas today right he loses the confidence midway in the race and you can see it where if Hamilton crosses him after that you can see Bottas just visually dropping behind today there was a problem with Bottas car also. I think they showed it in the footage right there yeah, was there something was, dangling you saw on the 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 right not the right rear but you could see it just where the air scoop was there was I couldn't really tell what it was. It kind of looked like the decal was peeling off, yeah. but then it looked substantially larger. Where, yeah. that, that, where that could have come from, we don't know. And could it have been a part of the car? Exactly, which but was affecting its performance. The, the strangest thing for me, and I understand team orders are a thing. I don't like the team orders that Mercedes have. But yes, I get it. Hamilton is the number one driver. Yeah. But Botas, in his own right, is a good driver. He should also challenge... Lewis Hamilton yeah. because what at the moment what I'm seeing is Lewis Hamilton is kind of just escaping up the road Mercedes is like oh he's the golden child we'll yeah. let him do what he wants Botas wants to do something oh can I do something no no and yeah. we saw that today with the tyre strategy he wanted to go for I think it was the reds right was yeah the, the soft reds. ones yes so sorry I don't know the difference you know, yeah. I just got back into F1 so he wanted to go for the reds but for some reason the, the not the Mercedes team put whites on and I saw it as well, and I picked it up uh, as a commentator. You spot these kind of things. Yeah. You spot the smallest you know details. Very well, yeah. And I think Brundle summed it the best. Botas was probably confused as well when he went out of the pit lane and went, hang on a sec, those are white. Because he was checking red. his tyres. Visually, he was checking his tyres, what they had put, because he had no idea that they had put hards on his car. Now, apparently, there is a rule with, uh, with this within the Mercedes, which says that if the driver who's in the lead if he decides to put the hards or mediums or soft, the driver next, the, his teammate has to put the same tyres. I mean, that's a very, very ridiculous strategy that they have. Like, considering it's a Mercedes, like, they have to have, like, two drivers. But I think they are somewhere controlling who races who. Essentially, so. and I get it, we're, the season's kind of jumbled up at the moment. We've still got a couple of races left. Yeah. But we're not challenging for a championship at the moment, are we now? We're not getting into the final four races where there's, like, uh, 80 points on offer or, yeah. or, or how many minimum points it's it is not down to the wire where you know the, exactly. like 2, 5, 7, 10 points are going to be deciding everyone but it's a clear margin right now between Hamilton and Bottas now so I don't think Bottas stands a chance also to unless Hamilton just doesn't race at all in the next 4 races that's when I think he's got a chance to s clinch this championship but yeah, we are and already, then yeah. maybe you could call it karma it's cramps with 7 laps to go Oh yeah, cramps, <laughs> and he was, uh, and weirdly, two laps later, he was the fastest. He had pumped in a fastest lap after that. Interesting. So, so last last time in the Eiffel Grand Prix, it was a boo boo on his on Grosjean's finger. Yeah. This time it was Lewis Hamilton having a cramp. I wonder what's going to happen in the. Uh, it's not Istanbul, is it? The next one. It's. Um, I have to check. Because I'm so excited. To be honest, I'm so excited for Istanbul because I love Istanbul. And I think I actually stopped watching Formula One when they removed it from the calendar. That's the last yeah. time I remember it. Love it. And I heard today that it's not the next round, it's the round afterwards. And I'm very, very excited for that. Yeah, it's going to be pretty epic that race. The, and it, I think it's the next weekend only, the race now, again. So, yeah. And I think they should keep this track also. Because this was pretty exciting, that race. And the hills and the drops, the drivers were, at one point, they were like, it was like a roller coaster. And, you know, you have that feeling when you go from a top of a mountain or there's a bump and then, you know, you get this lightness inside, which is what they were experiencing because they said they would literally see the sky at one point of time and then they were onto the track later on. Well, not, so, not only was the track a roller coaster, weather was a roller coaster as well. 
they were always constant, you know, oh, is it going to rain? The drivers were, uh, you know, looking up at the sky, the sky themselves, looking at the clouds, going, oh, is it going to rain? And yeah. the engineers were like, no, focus on the road. And then, you know, it kind of played on an emotions as well as a viewer, because you're thinking, oh, when is it going to start? Because obviously rain brings excitement, you know, yeah. fast pit stops, you've got people uh, spinning off, and you, you see whole different strategies play out. Then it just didn't happen. There were light showers, like, for example, I think it was the last 10 laps or so, yeah. light showers in the pit lane. And then Max Verstappen came across, uh, came onto the radio and said something very strange. He said the wind was gusty and yeah, the wind gusty. was picking up. Yeah. So, and then another, another few other drivers came in as well. I think it was uh, George Russell. Russell he said the day. same thing. Yeah. There's a lot of wind and I've been pushed around a lot. So yeah. it was not just a roller coaster on track, it was a roller coaster in the atmosphere as well because yeah. it had wind, rain. So sunshine. much was going on. And especially the start of it, there were a few drizzles, which is what made the start very interesting. I mean, so much was going on. So we'll come to that also. But the, yeah, with the Mercedes, I think they have a clear, let's be honest now, they have a clear one, two choice in their paddock right now. Who's the number one driver and the number two driver now? Which is a shame. Um, shame, yeah. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of team orders. I've been in, mo I've been in the motorsport realms for six years. I've seen it myself happen and you just think to yourself, if you've got two competitive drivers, it doesn't quite make sense. Exactly. If yeah. you've got one, I understand. But two, come on, and especially this early on in the championship, they should let Botas, you know. Yeah, work. he should be free to race because you can obviously see there is something weighing him down. Very clear. Let's and move on to, to the next driver that is being weighed down again is Ferrari's Sebastian Vettel. It's just so painful to see him, you know, and just in today's race, there was no mention of him anywhere, literally till the end of race where we then saw him because he was climbing up the order slowly from 15th to 10th and he just finished his race 10th, but shame one point. But it's just so weird to see two drivers, same drivers in a team perform so differently in a car. Like Leclerc is almost fourth and I mean, no, I mean, Leclerc drives the wheels of that car, of course, but I don't understand what is going on between these, I just these two cars. Same team. Vettel is just thinking now that he's moving on to Aston Martin. He's not getting the car yeah. he wants. And you can kind of see that he's no longer the preferred driver. I don't want to say he's on the shelf because he certainly isn't. He's yeah. still, he's still he's very four. young. You know, if you look at Raikkonen, I had no clue that he's 40 at some point this year. Yeah. I didn't realize that at all. Yeah, and it doesn't look like that. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't seem Vettel has lost talent. I just don't think he has the competitive car. And now that he's moving on to Aston Martin, I don't want to say that he's not doing a good job because it might not just be, you know, it's not his fault, obviously. Yeah. It could be the car, but we don't know. But like you said, it was very strange. But then we had the last seven laps of the race. Yeah, right. Where out of nowhere, he was in 13th, you know, dawdling around doing not much. And out of nowhere, he started overtaking people. And yeah. the battle with Ricardo, and like you said, when they come over the crest on the hill, it was amazing. Somewhere I read that, you know, they have already started developing their cars for 22 itself. So they've started removing, because from 22, they won't be having any designs or whatever fins that they put on the barge boards. That is not going to happen. So everything is going to be plain. So they've already t started testing that. And which is why I think there was a performance improvement for Leclerc also, which is what we saw. But yeah, great performance from him also. But shame, yeah. But I should be somewhere in the front and not battling somewhere in the back behind. We'll, we'll see what it's like in Racing Point. So, talking about Racing Point, let's touch up on them. Yeah. I tuned in just when Stroll had that racing incident, incident. which I don't agree with the stewards there. He was clearly faster. Okay, he probably used the wrong way. He shouldn't have gone around the outside to go around Norris. Yeah. So that's where I can kind of see that it's like a 50-50. It's a racing incident and it's also, you know, not the right place to overtake. Plus, the track was actually pretty narrow from where he was trying to. And, you know, there should be some amount of, you know, re they should be relaxed about, you know, penalizing him at that point because he had nowhere to go. He couldn't go into the gravel trap or, you know, just run off. But at least they tried. And Lando Norris had a probably a slow puncture because of that incident. Who knows? But eventually, Stroll just retired because he also had a penalty and then... Otmar on the radio, on the radio and television said that you know the damage on the car was substantial, so they had to retire the car. So that was pretty much done. But then Perez, even he was caught out in the first lap incident you know, where everyone is doing everywhere, you know. And then he went back, almost went dropped to 20th, 
he went for his tire change, he changed his tire on the first lap itself, put on the mediums, went on a stint and he continued till what lap 42 I guess, yeah. So he was on lap 42, 46 and then he put on the softs, but by then he was like what P6 or P5. Monster of a drive from Perez, I want to say he's probably the driver of the day for he me. He is, yeah. He, like you I said, agree. He, he got, you know, caught up in that kerfuffle at the beginning, dropped back and then he went back forward again. You know, it was great to see what Perez and he was also one of those drivers that was uh, in one of those battles as well, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, Further along, was it was it Gasly that who's in? So he was with Gasly with? and Sainz, both of them. In the end, yeah, because his tires were just going off, going off. So I think he went back, but he finished. I think P seventh. I'm sorry, we don't have the exact uh, finishing uh, score the the card right now because we just immediately we got down and started making this video. So yeah, so I think he's P seventh and Gasly was P five. Sainz was P six but still a commendable effort and he's a driver who's actually fighting for his place in F1 right now because obviously he's not going to be signed again next year with Racing Point. Well, see, well, Perez has the upper hand here because he's a pay-to-play driver. Yeah. I say that, but he isn't. He has, big, he has backing from three very big companies yeah. from his home country. But he's yeah. also a very good driver, so, and yeah. he can prove himself. So he can not only bring the money, he can bring the talent as well. And I think, you know, guys like Haas and um, other teams that are, have empty slots coming up, they should be looking at Perez going, well, he can bring money and he can bring us yeah. experience as well. So that moves us on now to Williams. Williams, because so, there are links that probably Russell is going to be axed and Perez is probably ending up there with all of his funds and all the kitty into that team because Latifi obviously gets in a lot of money already for the team so and Williams is the team that is struggling with funds so they obviously want as much as money that they can get for 21 and also through to 22 so I, I think but it's a shame again that Russell has to give up his place because Mercedes Today morning, they came out with a news that said that, uh, you know, they can't take any decisions into uh, Williams' team if they decide to, you know, leave Russell out of the team. So, that's a very clear indication that he is going to be, you know, removed from the team and then hopefully Perez, I mean, yeah, it's good thing for Perez but bad that, you know, some deserving the driver is again losing out on a seat. They didn't. Do, I mean, to be honest, Williams didn't do much today. I mean, they haven't done much in a couple of years. But of course, like you said, they're a well. They used to be a, a top tier team. Now they're sort of you know low ranking. They're yeah, just kind of circulating. They've around. just lost out their way. Yeah. So, so the next team is Red Bull now, because there's a lot going on at Red Bull. Max Verstappen. Good job. Good job. The the wind was affecting him a bit too much. As and a Dutchman, he should be used to the wind, but yeah. okay. <laughs> and plus, he was caught out. So. Hamilton, Bottas and Max couldn't get temperatures into their tyres when they were doing the warm-up lap, which is when things started off, you saw signs go straight to what first so, and then after that these guys were still going back, Hamilton, Bottas and Max together, three of them and even Max complained that, you know, he failed to put like temperatures into the tyres. And it's but, interesting because yeah. he also was the first to go on the new tyre compound as well, was it? He went on the softs, right? First, yes. Or was soft. it normal he went no, on? No, no, he went on softs. So he, he was the first to go on them, but yet he couldn't catch Bottas or Hamilton, which yeah. is very strange. But Verstappen is not the biggest talking point. Albon is. And it really yeah. hurts to see that this is, it's or more or less it's happening again. I mean, he's, he's just so not, again, he's another driver who's not connected to the car. Or he's just not finding... I don't think it's, he's not connected to the car because if we look back through what's happened already in the season, he's already got a podium finish. So he can, he's a proven podium he's, finisher. Yeah. He just hasn't... I don't think he's got the right car. Yeah, I mean, he's... So, which is why Red Bull, because they've been developing the car all around Max. So, which is why any other new driver that is going to come is going to find it difficult. So, there are again talks that... Albin is going to be removed and another seat is up for grabs at Red Bull. 
Now the talks are that it could be Hulkenberg, but Hulkenberg is also uh, tied up to another team now, which is Haas. So we heard the news this week and that you know Kevin and Grosjean both are going to end their contract with the team this year, and then that leaves two new seats now at Haas. So there are so many news going around where if Hulkenberg would end up there or at Red Bull. And there's also, which you were saying, I think there are the young drivers that they were planning to. So if we talk about Haas now, so Gunther Steiner said that he's looking at a five-year plan rather than a yearly plan. Oh, okay. So this gives the impression that Gunther is looking at molding a future champion or at least someone that you know can push Haas into sort of new realms within yeah. F1. And it'll be interesting to see who they take because there are some front runners in F2, but mm. there are also some drivers within F1 at the moment who yeah. are still somewhat young and very talented. You know, yeah. if you think Perez would be a very good fit for the Haas, I think. Yeah. You know, he's experienced, he's young, and he has backing. So he can bring yeah. uh, some funds to the team, but he'll much better get a Williams. Uh, then we've got guys like Mick Schumacher, which you, I don't think will go to Haas. I think he's, in a, he's on contract for another team, mm-hmm. unless we see what Mercedes did with Michael Schumacher back in the early 90s when yeah. they paid, I think it was, they paid Tyrrell 150, was it 50,000 pounds or 150,000 pounds? I can't remember, for a single race seat. So mm-hmm. we could see something, something like that happen mm-hmm. where Mercedes or with whoever Mick Schumacher is where he's going to potentially end up will pay for a race seat for, to that team to put him in that car. Then we've got people, uh, we've got people like Nicky de Mazepin, the young, uh, yeah, young the driver young as well, who's looking upcoming as is. well. Yeah. Uh, and there are other F2 drivers that escape my, my memory. There are lots, yeah. There are lots of uh, deserving di- young drivers. And again, with the, the thing with Mick Schumacher is that uh, you don't know if Ferrari would ever want, would get interested with Mick Schumacher and they would ask Haas to you know, release him and give it to because he's obviously a Ferrari, he's a young driver program, he's into that. So Ferrari would obviously want him someday to drive for them. And if Haas is looking for a five-year plan, which is why they would want some driver who's like a long-term, five-year, they would have, you know, with them. And they would develop the car together. So, so that's why I'm thinking uh, Mick will not be in, uh, yeah, he won't get sense. He'll go to a different team. Who that will go to, we don't know. Uh, we'll find out eventually. Because it's going to be pretty soon because we are almost nearing November and it's usually around December and uh, by, by then pretty much all the drivers are decided, the yeah. lineup well, of Well, there's it. guys like uh, Callum Elot, if I said that his name correctly, I know he's in the young Ferrari driver yeah. program, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. But again, would, you know, has to release him after five years, we don't know. Yeah. There's guys like Roy Nassani. Yeah. Uh, there's a few drivers in the Formula 2 category, uh, but the most... I honestly think Nikita Mazepin is definitely going to go to Haas. Mm-hmm. The young Russian is very talented in F2, and it just, I don't know, it just seems to click, especially if they're looking for a five-year plan. But who that other seat will go to, we don't know. Could we see Hulkenberg, let like you say, go there? Could, could we see uh, uh, Perez go there? We'll have to wait and see. It's, it's sort of a musical or, chair going on. Or Russell. That's a very interesting, yeah. It, but the problem with Russell is that he's with Mercedes and he's going to jump into a Ferrari powered team. So that's where Mercedes may, may stop his, you know, move going into a Ferrari powered team. So that but is something. Going back to what you said about Mercedes announcement this morning or yesterday is that they have no say in Williams. Right. Yeah. So uh, would they control something like that? Because in all fairness, they're giving up. Uh, George Russell and keeping him Williams to sort of mold him into a future champion. Yeah. So could he turn around and go, well, look, you know, you did this to me, so I'm going to go, Haas is offering me. Yeah, because he can't just wait for a year again. Because it looks that Bottas may have another year and then from 22, probably Russell may end up at Mercedes. Who knows? 22 is a very different game again because there are new cars coming up. But let's go, let's go quickly back to Red Bull. So, Alexander Albon, and we'll throw Alfa Tori in here as well because they are the, you know, the the B team. team. Yeah. So Pierre Gasly, very strong. We've seen that. Yeah. Is it a possibility we could see Pierre Gasly back in the seat of a Red Bull? Um, I, 
I, I do not think, I mean let us know in the comment section because would, is it the right decision to get Gasly again into Red Bull because they pretty much destroyed his career when they got him into that seat. I mean you know what happened last year, he had a meltdown, six months down the ta line, they changed him and switched it to again the, the sister team which is Alpha Tori and yeah so I, I, I do not think even Gasly would take up that seat because he, if you look right now, he's been performing phenomenal. Today's race, he went up to P6 and he's been fighting his way like right from like P10, P12, and then he went up all the way. And he's he knows that he can trust that car, he can trust that team, and the team has always been welcoming him back. You know, whenever he went back to Red Bull and came back, yet the guys were like, yeah, we still want Gasly around. So. I think he, he is very comfortable with that surrounding and in that team where there is not much of a pressure like what Max gives you. So it will be interesting to see what Red Bull do now with Alex. I mean, I don't think it will be the good thing to let Alex go because yeah. he has proven himself and he is sort of connected to a younger generation, him, George Russell and um, yeah. the meme lord Lando Norris. Lando Norris. They, you know, they really cater towards a younger generation and bringing new fans into the championship. So I don't think it would be a good idea to bring, uh, to take, sorry, Alex out and put a new driver in yet. Give him yeah. some time, maybe. But then again, if they do, who are they going to promote? Because we have to think about Yuri uh, Tsunoda. I probably said that wrong, mm -hmm. the young Japanese driver, because he's part of the Red Bull Junior program. And yeah. he is one that a few of the other, if you watch many other YouTube yeah, yeah. videos around, they're talking about Yuri quite a bit. Yeah, quite. It would be interesting to see what they do, though, because Yuri, obviously, being Japanese driver, Honda power plant, but Honda's going because yeah. they're taking another engine. engine. So will they still consider Yuri and put him in behind it, behind the wheel of an Alfa Tori? Because Daniel Kvyat, yeah, he, and it's about time I think Kvyat had like they had a thought about that seat because he's been on forever now in that seat. And then let's be honest, Gasly has been on and off yet he's been on like overperforming him in that seat. In, when you compare the two drivers, I think Gasly is the better of the two. Now, McLaren had a very decent uh, weekend to be honest. They were slow in all the practice sessions, but yet during the race you saw Sainz go all the way till the first position. He continued for a good six laps and then obviously when the Mercedes and the Red Bulls were all back and heated up with their tyres, they all went and overtook him and he was back then like in the P5 and P6. but Science is something to look forward to, but then he's going to Ferrari next year. And then we have who signs his partner? Why well, did my brain just freeze? There we go. The meme lord himself, Lando Norris. Lord, yes. The I damage, I think, that slow puncture, the carbon fiber that he ran over, yeah, that caused his downfall. Pretty much ruined his race yeah. after that. Which so. is really unfortunate because it would be great to see Lando Norris yeah. challenge as well after, like Albon in the beginning, you know, podium finishing. And that's why I believe. You know, going back to Albon, I know I shouldn't keep talking about him. They don't, they, Red Bull should not let Albon go. They yeah. need to give him just a little bit more time. Yeah, he does need time, that's for sure. And another team, and pretty much the last team, and again, another driver fighting for his seat is Ocon in Renault. Gosh, there are so many drivers this year round. They've been like going on and off, and Ocon has just returned to Formula 1 in the Renault. Again, he was a Mercedes reserve driver last year. So, yeah, if you think of that, even Russell stands a chance to, you know, join some other team, not the, a non-Mercedes team, because uh, Ocon joined Renault and then, yeah, he's also, the thing is with these drivers is that they have other drivers in their team like Ricardo who are performing and they have been in the team, so they know the car and they always outperform them. So, you really don't stand a chance that way in terms of comparison because they've only given him like what, a year? Not even a year yet. So, oddly enough, talking about uh, the silly season, it's a bit late for a silly season I think in October, mm -hmm. uh, but it's still a silly season because this, uh, you know, Lots the year on. 2020 has been completely bananas. Oof, yeah. I've just found out Hamilton has not resigned his contract yet for Mercedes. He hasn't been confirmed. Oh, really? so this is very interesting. Has Hamilton peaked his, his career in F1? Oh, oh, yeah, good. Now this, yeah. I may be, you know, rambling on here. 
I think this could be a possibility, and I'm going into other forms of racing here, that we could see Mercedes re-enter Le Mans and bring mm. the GT1, because who has more experience behind, who has the most amount of experience behind that car? Who could be a championship front runner in the 24 hours of Le Mans? Oh. Lewis Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton, yeah. But I'm just, you know, that's just a, a crazy afterthought. Think Let us know in the comments what you think about Lewis Hamilton and if he'll re-sign with, with Mercedes, or do you think he'll go off to do the 24 hours of Le Mans, kind of like Fernando Alonso did? Yeah, that is, no, I didn't think of this because, because yeah, now that you think of it, because even Toto said in between that they were still in talks about their contract and they weren't finalized about it. There were also talks in between that Mercedes was planning to sell a lot of their stakes in the Formula 1 team and then, you know, go into other form of racing. I think we've pretty much done with this race coverage. Next weekend, we'll be back again with another podcast on the next race, which is... Let's have a look what it is. Yes, let's have a look. Suspense. Drum roll, please. Wait. I don't know how to, I don't know how to figure drum out. Drum roll. Wait, I can't figure out the internet. Give me some time. It's going to take... It's going to be a long drum roll. <laughs> the longest drum roll ever. Yeah. Uh, where is the 2020 season? Here we go. Calendar. <laughs> uh, we're going to Imola. We're going to Imola. Yes. yes. That and is... And then... Well, oddly enough, we only have four rounds of championship yes, left. Yes, yeah. Uh, sorry, four countries left. Four. Five races. races. Oh, yeah, five we've races, got, four countries. We've got Imola, then we've got Istanbul Park, Istanbul. which is Turkey. We've got two, two rounds Bahrain. of Bahrain. And, of course, the highlight of the season, the our road. home circuit, Abu the Dhabi. Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, which, to many people, isn't the most exciting Grand Prix. I think that is pretty much it for this podcast. Give it a thumbs up if you like this one and if you want to subscribe to my channel then you can click here and if you want to watch more videos then click here. We shall see you in the next video. Signing off from here. Bye bye and bye. take care. And don't remember to like, share, subscribe, comment. I did that. Do, do whatever you want with it. I did that. <laughs> bye. Get your garbage man to subscribe and your delivery guys. When you order McDonald's next time, delivery guy, do it. Okay.